you've got customers who have a vested interest in you being viable. Because if you really are doing that intelligent niche marketing, where you're supplying something that they truly value, then they want you to stay in business because maybe they can't get it from somewhere else. So are your customers someone to help you with your financial situation? And in some cases they are. Or they can put you in contact with somebody who is. Right? They're supporters, they're salespeople for you, they're marketing people for you, and they can assist with finances as well. Um, there are uh, uh, complementary businesses in the community, businesses that do well when you do well, who also then have a vested interest in how you're doing. And they also may be people to go to um, to help with some of the uh, issues that you're facing. So I think the idea is with the financing and with cash flow is to start looking beyond the traditional ways that we deal with it and think about who is really that larger support network that uh, will be affected positively by our business succeeding. One other thing to say, I think, about finances is that in these kind of times, I think we also, those of us who choose to take this path, and if we don't have, uh, if we're not publicly traded companies, we don't have shareholders who are um, demanding of uh, share dividends and shares of profits, and many small businesses in Sudbury are in a position where they don't have that is that you can actually choose to be a type of enterprise that is not profit-based. And for some people, that's a very novel concept, but it makes things a lot easier in terms of gaining support and partnering up with people if you're not always looking at developing profit. You can be in a position where what you're trying to secure is your living as an entrepreneur and the living of all of your employees and paying for itself and paying to provide the product and service, and making sure you have a little bit of cash cushion and growth money, and not needing to develop profit beyond that. So it's really a rethinking of a business model um, that is much closer to a nonprofit organization, but I'm not advocating that we all go and start nonprofits because they're very limited in certain ways. Because they can't build cash cushions that can preserve them in good times. They have to spend their budgets every year and so on. Whereas, uh, um, for-profit company that is actually not profit-based can look to taking those monies and reinvesting them in other aspects of their business and in the community to grow something that is uh, much harder to extinguish because of sort of the way the roots spread out. So that's sort of just the tip of the iceberg on that one, but I'm a bit of a believer in social enterprise, so I wanted to have a chance to, well, I got this microphone here, <laughs> to speak to that. Um, I just, uh, I think really then, if I'm just going to kind of sum this all up, in terms of uh, the challenge that we face with, with these tough times and, and the uh, transmutation energy we can bring to that, to, to see it as an opportunity, I think, actually, just before I tell you sort of my, my conclusion with that, I feel I have to just mention something that popped in my head when Jerry was talking about, um, oh, yeah, times are bad, times are bad, and when that's the word and what that does to people. I was uh, fortunate enough to be in Cuba a month ago, and um, I went to visit uh, some friends of mine that I had met the previous year, Jorge and his family. And Jorge lives in a way that is not typical of most Cubans, but nonetheless, this is how he lives. He lives on the end of um, um, a stretch of, of, of beach, very, very close to the ocean, and his house would be the size of two of these round tables. And it is basically made of corrugated tin and um, metal sheeting and, and odds and ends kind of taped together, as it were. It's pretty much, if you looked at it, I mean, we would say that's a shack. And it's a little two rooms and an earth floor. And, uh, and, and his family lived there. And they're an incredibly hospitable family. And the first time I met them, they invited me to come for dinner. And this was before I had gone to their house for the first time. They have a little tiny little farm. And anyway, we went there and they prepared a, a sumptuous feast for my partner and I. And they were telling us the story of why their house looked like this because they had just suffered in the last hurricane and their more permanent home had been blown away. And so this is where they were living now until they could construct a new home. Anyway, 
we went back to see them and we had some, some things that we wanted to bring them. Uh, this year we prepared a photo album for them because they don't have a camera and so we've taken pictures of all their friends and family and we put it together an album for them and we wanted to share that with them. And uh, we went back to their house and it was situated differently. I'm like, sure it was facing the other way last time. And then, yes, we got hit by Hurricane Dennis this time. <laughs> anyway, we that house away so we got a new one. But they had the footings in for their concrete house that they're going to be building so that they won't be subject to all of the hurricanes. The reason I'm telling you the story is because um, they're a very happy family. And Jorge took me aside before I left and he said, got quite a concerned look on his face, which for him, he goes, got a big beaming smile. And he said, I hear times are really hard in Canada. <sighs> and I said, oh really, you heard? He goes, yes, there's people out of work and uh, they don't have money and they're struggling and I'm so sorry to hear about that. And you know, it, it must be very tough for you. And that was a very powerful lesson in how do we internalize this notion of times are hard and, and, and what we have to live through. And you know, we look around here and the incredible wealth of opportunity that we have. Um, I, I just, after, after listening to him say that, I don't think I could ever say that, um, that, that we're in such a terrible, dire situation, they were practically wanting to send us care packages. <laughs> <laughs> what can you take back with you? <laughs> so that's not to diminish that we still have our own pain. We never want to diminish our own suffering and our own struggles by comparing that with others, but we do want to bring perspective to it. So that said, yes, we do have challenges right now. And we do have opportunities. And if we embrace these opportunities, what are we going to get? Well, what we're going to get are all kinds of small enterprises that have made themselves incredibly strong and resilient by looking at all these aspects of the way they do things. And so they will be able to be long-lasting enterprise, enterprises and weather all kinds of storms coming up. What we will get are people, the people in those enterprises, who've embraced these opportunities, who have um, developed all kinds of uh, their capacity for creative thinking, for intelligent thinking, for being resourceful, for developing awareness. These are people who now will be unafraid because they face the difficult things and they found ways to make it work for them. So now what is to fear? So what you get now are not just enterprises that are resilient, but people who are resilient. When you put those two things together, what you're going to get is a community that is, as Martin talked about, interconnected, interdependent, because there's only way that they're going to be able to find this kind of resilience, and a community that is now supportive and vibrant and vital and rich in all kinds of ways. And so you have a resilient community. Dana was saying to me, all these wonderful ideas around this room, but we hear them all the time. What do we have to do to make these things happen, implement it? And I don't, could, didn't, couldn't see because of the pillar. Who was speaking at that back table who did a little rework on the Nike we, slogan, we just do it. <laughs> <laughs> just be it, you changed it to, right? Okay, I like that very much. And that's what I said to Dana. We just have to start doing them. We just start, we just do these things. Do you want to put on this form? We're having the discussions. We can all go home tonight and just start being the things that we already want to be and make that happen. So thank you very much for, for listening to me, giving me an opportunity to learn from you and to be able to do a little bit of teaching.